how's it going people welcome back to my channel there's a couple rumors circulating over the last 24 hours so i thought why not give you guys another rumor roundup today if you haven't already go over to instagram turkish ldn go over to twitter turkish ldn follow me on both platforms that's where i give all my updates that's where i provide a lot of my trailers content and whatnot and links to other things that I've, i'll be doing over the next season or two so make sure you lot are going to follow me on them social media channels and let's get straight into the rumours surfacing over the last 24 hours. We've had a big one with Daya Upamakano from RB Leipzig, someone I talked about in yesterday's video, someone I've talked about throughout this summer. If we was to get him, I'd look at it as a bigger signing than Nicolas Pepe. Reason being because he's a 20-year-old French defender, he's solid, he's fast, he's no nonsense, he's someone that likes to defend. When you have, well, the brief times I've seen him and Konate together, they complement each other so well. They're both so confident yet so young. I wouldn't mind either of them, but it seems like the rumours are um, circulating around Daya Upamakano. Do I believe them? That's a whole other story. I personally don't believe the rumours. Um, reason being because if we wanted such a defender, surely we would have been talking about it a lot earlier in the window, not on the last three days. Um, I know Build Sport, a German publication, came out with the news yesterday that we bid 55 million pounds, 60 million euros, and it was rejected straight away. I think RB Leipzig are looking at, looking for around 70 mil, um, which is understandable in today's market when you see fucking Harry Maguire going for 80 mil, and in my opinion, he isn't the best of defenders out there, then you can see why these other clubs are asking for a hell of a lot of money for these younger defenders with a lot of potential. A um, bit more on Upamakano, he's 20 years old. Um, he's, he's got a bit of everything. He's fast, he's strong, he's got presence. He can take the ball out of defence. But the thing I like most about him is he's no nonsense. He's someone that likes to defend. He's someone that enjoys the art of defending. And we haven't, we haven't had someone that enjoys the art of defending for such a long time. Such a long time. Probably since the Invincibles. When I look at people like Loren and Sol Campbell, they love defending. They, they, they didn't care about anything else. They just love defending. And since then we've had... Um, I know football has changed and centre-backs have become more, more uh, um, outfield footballing players more so than just the last line of defence. But it is what it is. We need someone with that mentality. We need someone that's going to come in and shake things up. We need someone that's going to come in and put their body on the line. Someone that's going to come in and, you know, hack the Premier League. Because first and foremost, the Premier League is the most difficult league in the world. In terms of um, physicality, in terms of end-to-end -end stuff, in terms of teams in the bottom half being able to beat teams in the top half. Do you know what I mean? It happens more often in the Premier League than any other league. And Upa Makano, when I look at his attributes, when I look at his, um, his, his stature, his, his, his stats, his physical presence, I believe he's someone that will grow into a world-class defender. He is not the complete article yet. He's only 20 years of age and he's only been in Germany. But he is someone that will grow into, the def into a defender that I, hope, that I hope we can get. Because as we all know, the defence has been has been a massive, massive issue at Arsenal Football Club for so, so long. Like I just mentioned, Invincibles was probably the last defence I was actually happy with that actually did their job, that actually provided cover and safety and, and, and made us fans feel safe. Since then, the last decade, it's been mess after mess after mess after mess. The combinations used hasn't worked, fullbacks used hasn't worked. We've just gone through defenders and gone through, gone through money on the defence willy-nilly without ever really improving it. Without ever really improving the defence, I'm not going to lie. When we brought Mertesacker in, there was a slight peak with him and Koscielny because Mertesacker was much more the leader, much more vocal, and he had a good footballing brain on him and Koscielny was more the dirty work, the, the more physical athlete that would tidy up any mess that, that Mertesacker's lack of pace and... and um, you know, when teams get in behind, Koscielny would cover. But essentially, it didn't fix our defence. We still leaked in a hell of a lot of goals. It gave us a little peak, but it went straight back down. And 
that is part of Wenger's downfall, in my opinion. He never, ever sorted the defence out. Yes, we've had great technical players since the Invincibles. When you look at Arshavin, you look at Nasri, you look at Fabregas, Heleb. Well, I, that was back in the day, but... It's the defence that he, he didn't sort out for so many years. We knew we needed a centre-back for so many years and we'd go by wingers, we'd go by strikers, we'd go by midfielders. And I know people are going to say, oh, but we need a centre-back this year and we bought a winger. The, the difference is this year we needed a winger as much as we needed a centre-back. We had no wingers last year. We had no width last year. So Nicolas Pepe signing, it's a great signing. And not having a centre-back doesn't take anything away from that signing. Because with or without a, a massive centre-back signing this summer, we would still need a winger. We would still have problems if we signed a centre-back for 70 mil and we didn't get Pepe, then we would still have problems attacking. Because it's so easy to defend against Arsenal at times with our lack of width and with only Oba and Laka, and the focal points in attack. The only people in attack that really, really do the business, that are really productive, that are really something to worry about. So now we've added Pepe, doesn't take away anything from from that signing that we haven't got a defender but Arsenal Football Club it's time to sort out this defence and one thing that I don't get is look apparently it's Daya Upamecano or Daniel Rugani on loan how can it be either or how can it be one is a 20 year old French defender someone that's got a high potential high ceiling um, someone that we apparently looking to spend around 60 million euros for how can it be him or Daniel Rugani on loan, someone who's gone to a top club off the back of some good form at Empoli, but hasn't really proven himself there, hasn't really worked out for him over the years. And now he's surplus to requirements. Juventus have brought in two centre-backs this summer, not only Delit, but they bought Merit Demiral as well, uh, 15 million, young Turkish defender, 21 years of age. So now I look at it like, how can it be one of the most sought-after young defenders in Europe right now or someone surplus the requirements surely that doesn't make any sense how can it be one or the other if we're going to sort out this defense then surely Upa Meccano is all eggs in that basket and just get the bids up and ready and done and let's test the waters in the final couple of days let's let's get to personal terms at least let's try and talk to the lad because rumor has it is he wants to stay in Champions League football obviously he's worked hard there to build a partnership with Konate and they love, they love the partnership over there. Do you know what I mean? Yes, Germany isn't the most, um, how do I put it, isn't the strongest league to form an opinion on players. But you can only form of what they've done. And at the end of the day, they are loved at RB Leipzig. They are both very young defenders. And Dayot would be someone that really, really is a statement of intent. Shows that Arsenal really do mean business and we are turning a corner in terms of how we do things. On the other hand, Daniel Rugani is more of the same. It's a loan signing, someone surplus to requirements at a team that we're trying to chase um, to get to their level. How do you expect to get to these teams' level by taking their dead weight, by taking the players that they don't need anymore, by taking the players that they don't see and um, they don't deem good enough at, for their club? How are we meant to reach their level by taking them? Just doesn't make sense to me. So Rugani, I'm against that transfer. I'd rather not get a centre back in. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'd rather not get a centre back in and deal with what we have rather than potentially go and waste money and on the other hand he could potentially come in and have something to prove and uh, and do well for us so that is the other side of the coin but just doesn't bode well for me i think we need to be going for a different um, type of center back than regarding i believe we need to be going to someone that's really um is out here to prove himself really prove himself Apologies, someone just come to my door, a delivery, so I thought let me just quickly go grab that and come back to you guys. But yeah, where was I? Daniel Rugani and um, Daya Upamakano. We might as well move on to Lauren Koscielny now because Koscielny has agreed a deal with Bordeaux. Arsenal have agreed a deal with Bordeaux, so we're just waiting on a medical. We're just waiting on the last bit of details to be sorted. And Koscielny's era at Arsenal is over. You know what I mean? It was... <laughs> It's been an up and down time, I'm not going to lie, more, more down times than up. But someone that, I'll give it to me, he has been a role model over the years and he has stayed loyal at times when he could have moved on to a better club, instead stayed. Um, it looks like more so for Wenger than Arsenal Football Club considering 
the summer now that Wenger isn't here, he kicked up a fuss and demanded to leave and refused to go on tour. I believe that's because of some more issues behind the scenes. But who knows, unless Laurent Koscielny comes out to tell us the reality of the situation, then it is what it is. He's going to be hated now by Arsenal fans because of the way he conducted himself in the last couple of months. But we've managed to get 4.5 million for him. We're saving 4.5 million on wages across the year. It is what it is. 9 million off the back of Koscielny. And I know a lot of fans are saying, yeah, that's exactly how a big club should move. But in my opinion, a big club should move by signing a fucking centre-back this summer and just letting Koscielny go for whatever, 8, 9 million. Instead, we'll, instead this is big news. That, this just shouldn't be big news. Martinelli signing shouldn't be big news. Koscielny going shouldn't be big news. They should be background news. But instead, this summer, they've been focal points in, in, in Arsenal headlines. Why? Because we're starved of, of good news and we're starved of um, positivity in the, in the summer window. So much so that like, all of us are clicking, refreshing, hoping for the best. And, and news and, and media outlets feed off that. They feed off the fact that Arsenal fans are desperate. They feed off the, fan, the fact that Arsenal fans are are pretty stupid at times, I won't lie to you, especially the online lot. And they just chuck out any rumours willy-nilly left, right and centre. And that's what this Daya Upamakano rumour could be. Two days left of the window, let's get some more views, let's get some more clicks. Oh, who does that the best? Arsenal fans. Arsenal linked to Upamakano, bang. When really, it's probably Daniele Rugani that we're very close to. It just doesn't seem likely that Arsenal Football Club are going to go spend 50, 60 mil in the last three days of the window when we could have been talking to my man the whole way through. If we really wanted him, we should have been talking to him early on. So the fact that a rumours come out with three days to go, 60 mil, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. But I'd love it. Trust me, I'd love it because he is a guy that, like I previously mentioned, someone that will really sort the, sort the defence out, someone that will really improve us as a unit at the back and someone that will grow with the young talent that we seem to be building at Arsenal Football Club. You look around, you've got Saliba coming in next year, you've got Martinelli who come in this year, you've got Gwen Doozy who come in last year, you've got Reese Nelson who came back, Emil Smith-Rowe who's come back, Joel Willock who's had a good pre-season, an Arsenal boy through and through. So we've got some... Some positive young talent. Hopefully they, they um, progress well and, and they really fulfil their potential because that is what they have right now, potential. And I'd love them to fulfil at Arsenal Football Club. But let's hope we can provide the right platform and provide the right grounds for these players to really excel and show themselves at our, at our football club and get us back into Champions League and, and get us back to moving like a big club again for the first time in God knows how long. Let me know in the comments below what you think about these Upper Meccano rumours. Let me know what you think about Daniele Rugani. I know a lot of people in my video when I said that I don't want him were saying he's good and he's this and that. But if he's fifth choice at Juventus, I don't want him at Arsenal Football Club. That is the full stop bottom line of it. I don't want him. If it's a loan, it's a loan. But fifth choice centre back. We can't be signing a fifth choice centre back from a club where we are trying to reach their level. It just doesn't make sense. Laurent Koscielny... Thank you. Goodbye. You were never the leader you was you was meant to become. Um, you kind of epitomised the soft centre we had at Arsenal Football Club over the last decade. Go enjoy your retirement. Have a year or two. One game a week. Um, and yeah, it is what it is. Koscielny out. Unai Emery's got pressure on him now considering the Pepe the Pepe purchase. But if, if we get a centre-back, then all eyes do go to Unai Emery. If we get a proper centre-back, then all eyes go to Unai Emery because he's been supported well enough in the summer window. But then again, if we don't, he's still going to get pressure put on him because of the Pepe signing. But fans need to realise that, yes, we've got Pepe in, but we didn't sort of defence that. And essentially, that's something that's going to bite Emery in the arse come the back end of the season because I don't see it really improving through coaching and through training and tactics over the summer we've just got a hell of a lot of inept people at the back inept people who don't know what they're actually doing so yeah like I said leave me let me know in the comments below what you guys are feeling last two days of the window what do you think is gonna happen what do you think we could do? Do you think we're going to do anything? And remember to follow the Instagram, follow the Twitter. I'm out, people. Love you.